What's a secret you won't share with anyone in person, but you are willing to share anonymously? Story 1. My ex-wife, her sister's husband on New Year's Eve 1998. Edit. The four of us know. That is it. The sister sort of made up. My ex told me that it was our... I don't know what to believe. I am just glad that I am divorced from that family and the drama. I have the most amazing girlfriend now. We talk. We communicate very well. It is a mature adult relationship. Good riddance to their bad. I have so many stories. My ex still would punish her and my kids by not letting them play together. Age 6. When she was mad at her sister. I have waited outside in the street while my ex SIL is inside talking to her husband about their daughter. And when their car alarm goes off and people come running out the house, I am to protect the daughter by controlling my ex ill. Crazy. Story 2. I fart in my co-worker's small office all the time. We're friends and all, so it's nothing malicious. I know when he leaves and usually how long he's going to be gone, so I'll hold my farts. And when he leaves, I'll walk into his office and air out. It's honestly hilarious. He will sometimes comment about it. He thinks that it's because he shares a vent with the bathroom two doors down the hall. He doesn't. But the office between his and the bathroom never stinks, so there goes his theory. Sometimes I'll go let one off then, like 10 minutes later, get an IM like, dude, this office man, it reeks in here. I don't think they've changed the carpets in years. This is nuts. Meanwhile, I'm holding my sides in laughter. Story 3. I own a 5-foot-tall love doll while living with two grandmas and my mom. It was interesting ordering the doll and getting this big box weighing 80 pounds into the house with no one noticing. I sat outside waiting for UPS to arrive just so no doorbell was rung. Had to go through the front door, through the hallway, then into my room. Somehow I did it with no one seeing. After owning her for about a week, it's a real bad trying to keep her clean with people around. So strategizing cleanup times in the bathroom sure is a chore. One time I had her in the bathtub to clean up and just took a shower so no one would question. Then I opened the bathroom door to see my grandma waiting to use it. I just had to pray she didn't open the shower curtains while doing her business, in which she didn't. So a few months go by, some family needs to move in. I would now share my room with my brother and his girlfriend temporarily. I hide the doll in a big enough box inside my closest. No one knows I have this life-size doll, and I would rather keep it that way. Story 4. When I was about 9, I went over to neighbor's house. I would usually go hang out with my adult neighbors because they would let me watch TV and give me snacks in exchange for helping them with the intention of seeing if I could play with the foster puppies she had. Well, she wasn't there, but her door was unlocked, and I just went in and played with the puppies. When I walked out of the house, she was coming down the driveway. There was a bunch of stuff in front of her door blocking it from view from the driveway. I just pretending like I had been waiting for a minute, and we walked in, and I got to play with the puppies again. Story 5. I have two. One, that I have night terrors that I can't even explain. Usually dealing with bizarro scenes you'd see out of an American Horror Story episode. Usually about friends, family, acquaintances, old friends I haven't seen in years. Literally anyone to the point of waking up crying and being scared to sleep. Two, that I think I'm actually developing Alzheimer's at age 23. I have a hard time remembering anything nowadays. I couldn't even tell you what I did yesterday. It's as distant as being five years old in my mind. I don't tell anyone because I don't like the feeling of people thinking there is something wrong with me. I already struggle with the idea that I actually have autism and everyone just interacts with me to be nice. Story 6. My fiancé is the only person I actually enjoy being around. I don't really say that out loud because it puts unfair pressure on her and exposes my antisocial tendencies. I wasn't always this way. It kind of happened over the past six or seven years after a deep depression and struggle with S. I've been happy and candy-free for several years, but I haven't been the same. When I make myself hang out with friends, I generally sit there thinking about how long I should stay before I can duck out and go home without looking like in bad. It's hard for me to have conversations with people because I just think things like, when are they going to leave me alone? Or when can I leave? I'm pretty good at hiding it and have several people who consider me to be their friends, but I secretly get no enjoyment out of those relationships. I'm not sure why my fiancé is different, but it makes me very afraid of losing her. I'm almost positive I won't find anyone else that I will be able to love like I do her. There have been a few months here and there in the past where we split up and I went out on dates with several other women. Some of them were very pretty and very nice, but I absolutely hated the entire process and never followed through on subsequent dates. I wish I could change that about myself, but I don't know how. Story 7. A few years ago, I went camping with one of my best friends. During the three-day camp out in the Poconos, we only brought meats. We had zero vegetables. It was basically a three-day BBQ for two. On our last night there, I awake around 3 a.m. to the most foul grumble and pain in my stomach as I realize I have to. Now... I look around for a good place within our little clearing, but there was none where I could comfortably squat. Until I noticed his truck we came to the campsite in. I ran over to the truck and leaned my back on the panel right over the rear wheel well, and 
explode. It had to look like that scene in South Park where Cartman made his mom bring the pan for him to. I wiped off and went back to bed, relieved. I wake up in the morning to my friend shaking me. Etsu, bro, did you? All over my truck? Now I could have said yes and we would have laughed our asses off. I'm not shy about it or anything, but something inside me compelled me to say, no, just for as and giggles. Dude, you have got to come look at this. There is a literal puddle on and around my truck. I hadn't seen the puddle when I left earlier in the night since it was so dark. So I got up wondering what it would look like when I turned the corner and see it. It was repulsive. It was all over his rim and then a massive puddle blob at the bottom near the tire. The area speckled with splash damage. At this point, I am trying my hardest to not fall over laughing. He says, do you think it was a bear? Which almost broke me. So I got on my phone and googled images for bear poop and scrolled until I found a pic of something that at least resembled what I had laid and said, yeah, this looks similar. So he thought it was bear, but we're not done. When I get home, I tell everyone the story I'm telling you here on Reddit. They all know it was me who laid the... And the funniest part is hearing my friend retell the story to our other friends, who know the real story, and they keep laughing hysterically at random parts of the story, and he's always like, WTF are you guys laughing at? We didn't even get to a good part. One day, I'll tell him. One day. Maybe take another all-meat camping trip and try to see if the bear will come back. Edit. I actually put two secrets here, both dealing with butt releases. Here is the other one I originally out in the thread if anyone is interested. Story 8. The real reason my arm is broken is because I now owe a seemingly unobtainable amount of money to the wrong people all because I tried to help my deadbeat brother out of a bad situation. PSA time, people. S can ruin not only your life, but your family's life as well. Update. I'm still alive and have cut my brother out of the equation. I won't be talking with him or his circle anymore. I am going to disappear for a while and try to rebuild elsewhere. For those who want to help, seriously, thank you. I do no deserve a single bit of it. Under advice of an internet stranger, I am not going to stir the candy publicly with more details. But I'm happy to share stories via PMs. Story 9. I'm deeply afraid of death. I'll remember that I will pass away someday and have a panic attack. It's been happening on and off since I was a child. And the first ones were around X-Mace, so I now hate it. No one but my close friends know. And it sucks because everyone I talk to a therapist about it, they write it off as something else. Like being afraid of growing up. Dude, no, I just told you, it's death. Now that I'm single, I'm finding these panics harder to manage. I don't know what to do. Edit. Holy hell, I'm thankful for all of the people who took the time to comment on this. If any of you want to talk, shoot me a PM. There's obviously more people that feel this way than I thought, and sometimes it helps to talk. Story 10. Only my girlfriend knows about this. Might delete it later. When I was a child, like pre-elementary school, I had this computer game. I can't remember the branding or characters, but I doubt anyone will read this anyways. The part I do remember is that it had his mini-game in it where you could build a sandcastle. It was honestly really cool for a kid like me, so I was always making sandcastles with their preset buckets and shovels and spoon. Well, here's the thing. The game featured this thing where if you clicked on background things, it would do a little animation. For instance, Maybe if you clicked on the sun, it would put on sunglasses. All I remember is that one of the people in the background, when clicked, would eat a hot dog with crunching sound effects. Even as a kid, this bugged me to no end. Hot dogs aren't crunchy. They're soft, right? Then it hit me. There must be sand in that hot dog well for some reason that sounded so bad good to approximately four-year-old me. Sandy crunchy hot dog? Yum, but I wasn't stupid. I knew the world would shun me for my sandy hot dog ways, so I never acted on it. For years and years and years, I've been in the sand closet, craving that sandy hot dog. I'm an adult man now, but I have to admit that if you handed me one right now, I might cry. That is my deepest, darkest secret. Edit. No, 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 chips won't do it and neither will toasting. It's got to be sand, the salt, the grit. I can't quite describe it, but it will never be satisfied by edible substitutes. Story 11. Well, it's a secret my mom confided in my GF, somehow not expecting her to tell me. I found out a month ago. Still has me. Up. My dad had committed suicide when I was two years old, two days before Christmas. It always left me wondering why. I'm 24 now and just found out. She was cheating on him with my stepdad. She had also told him he would never see me again. So he took his own life at his place of work after hours because he didn't know where else to go. I always thought my middle name being my stepdad's first name was just a coincidence. Because I don't remember him coming into my life until a couple years later. My mom found out she was pregnant with my little sister three days after my dad's death. I've always resented my stepdad before because he burnt all my baby pictures with my dad in them, and I never knew why. I look nothing like my stepdad BW and still haven't confronted my mom. Edit. I've read most of your comments and am still going through them. Thank you all, especially you and J Cuban M going to take his advice. 
and when the time comes, talk to my mom and forgive her. Also, thank you from whoever for the Reddit gold. I didn't expect this to blow up like it did. Update. I want to thank you slash Little Squirrel for his advice and checking with FB groups. I have a couple leads, so I'm going to see if the people who responded had any pictures of him in high school. Story 12. My friend's wife doesn't love him anymore, but she doesn't want to divorce him because of their baby. I think they'll separate in less than a year. Edit. For people asking how I know this information, the husband is my friend. Not close, but still consider him a good friend. We and the wife have friends in common. They have arranged free days for each other. She gets Tuesdays, he gets Thursdays. It's been three times now that she comes to a friend gathering, gets a couple of drinks, two or three bears so she's not even close to drunk when doing it, and starts crying of how she isn't happy with her guy because she doesn't love him anymore and wants to get out, but can't do to her daughter. Five people know about this, including myself, and to my knowledge, the husband doesn't know yet. I have to add, I do not feel comfortable intervening in other people's business if they want to separate or stay together. I think that's something they must decide as a couple. I cannot brainwash or suggest someone into being together or separating their spouse it. That's not right to me. All I can do is lay down the facts for the other person and let them take their decision. Story 13. I spent two years of my life being by the guy across the street when I was younger. It started when I was 10 and he was 15, probably as a game of doctor or truth or dare or some such. It wasn't until years later and I looked back and considered the fact that I was in elementary school and he was in high school that I realized what it was. It finally ended when I was 12 and my family moved away. He was really good at all the grooming, saying things like it was totally natural and that I'd get in trouble if anyone found out. He'd show me and even got physical a few times. He kicked me in the ribs once and locked me in a closet a few times. When I finally realized what was going on, probably years later when I was 16, and thought about the fact that I was 11 when he was 16 and how screwed up it really was, I knew I'd never tell anyone. I didn't want my parents finding out. They both had to work full time. I got home from school at 3, my mom at 5, and it normally happened in the hour and a half or so that they weren't home. I never wanted them to feel like it was their fault that I was and then are, so I'll take it to my grave. My spouse and best friends don't even know, and no one ever will. Thanks, Reddit. That actually felt pretty good. Story 14. My older brother, me and R... Me and my sleep from the age of four years old. We're five years apart, and he was always too old for it to be kids experimenting. As I got older, it would start to wake me up, and I would just lay there in fear with my eyes squeezed shut and hope it was dark enough that he couldn't see my face or didn't notice my breathing pick up in panic. He had issues and was violent and angry a lot. I didn't want to pass away or be hurt. I picked up habits of putting bells on my door handle, thumbtacks on my floor, piling things behind my door, and nothing kept him out. I convinced my mother someone was stealing my stuff. He was doing this too, as every time a new electronic or game would go missing, it was after one of those nights. So she put two locks on my door, a handle lock and a hook and loop higher up. Didn't work. My door was mangled, and I tried in every way possible to beg her for security cameras or a nanny cam or something. I could never tell her the truth then. She denied me the camera. One night I left my phone recording audio, and my whole phone was mysteriously water damaged to no return the next morning. It happened until I was 18 years old. I dropped out of high school because I was so depressed. I wasn't sleeping. I would stay awake for as long as possible in an attempt to keep him away, but no one can stay awake forever. I became heavily promiscuous and always had a boyfriend or girlfriend sleepover when my mother would allow it. Someone else in the room was the only thing that kept me safe. I tried not coming home a lot, but my mother would flip. In 2015, I finally told her the truth after I found out he had a child with a girl he hooked up with. I didn't want that piece of trash anywhere near children. My mother kicked me out of house, told me someone with as many partners as I had could have never been R, told me it happened to her as a kid and she never told and turned out fine. Clearly not. My older sister acted like I didn't exist. My dad told me he would rather go through chemo than ever have a daughter like me. There was an investigation open and childhood diaries and a bad five-second audio clip saved from the cloud wasn't enough and my case was closed. I got a retraining order anyways. I lived in a... Shelter for five months of my life because I had nothing. Ended up dating a man way older than me who physically D me because he paid for an apartment and food for me. I got a new job and worked my uh off until I could pay for my own place. And then I changed my entire name legally, packed up my and left the apartment without saying a word. I wish my brother would pass away. I used to see photos of my family, including my infant niece, all having a good, happy family time and living normal lives like I was never even born. Sometimes I wonder what my mother tells extended family when they ask why I'm not at family functions and haven't been in three years. I can't wait till the day my brother passes away. I moved a five-hour flight away and would have Kate him myself had I not been kicked out by my mother. I really would have.
It's still in the back of my head. The day he passes away, I'm going to show up at his funeral with bells on and I will tell the whole truth to everyone there. My parents attempt to talk to me. I send them screenshots of the things they said to me back then when they ask how I am. My life is good now. I have my dream job, an amazing apartment, and a boyfriend who I love more than anything. And he knows everything and still loves me too. I'm in a lot of antidepressant meds, and I have some PTSD issues, but I'm in both general therapy and childhood R. Specific therapy. Sorry for the novel. I've never gotten the whole story out to more than one person that isn't a cop, a therapist, or a doctor. Edits, small things. Story 15. I could never commit suicide. But I sometimes ponder about how easy it would be to just not have to deal with life. The last two years of my life have been emotionally very difficult. It's gotten a little bit better, but still not where I wish it was. I use homework as a coping mechanism, and I also use it to get out of my house, where I honestly hate spending time. When I get off work, I try to find things to do, just so I don't have to sit there alone, falling asleep alone. My bed feels so goddamn huge. Story 16. I have a fleshlight buried deep in my closet. I haven't used it for years. When I did use it, I used to shove it in the opening of a filled laundry bag so I would be something with heft and mass. I had some very lonely times in college, and that really, really helped me through it. I'm too hesitant to throw it away because I don't want someone to find it. I know the one day I throw it away, there will be a storm or flood that blows the trash can over and spills it all over the street. Or the garbage bag will rip. Or it will bounce out of the garbage truck and into the street. So it sits in my closet until the day I pass away and my family has to discover it. Story 17. A little more than three months ago, my fiancé, who I've been with for the past 15 years, was Kate in a car accident 2,000 miles away. I literally have nothing now. I'm so depressed that every time I see someone happy on social media of any kind, I get closer and closer to Kay, myself. My therapist isn't able to help me, no one is. Everyone keeps telling me it gets better, but it only gets worse. I don't want to keep myself. I just don't want to be alive anymore. Because every minute of life is absolute hell. Edit. Additional thoughts. I'm also struggling with the anger toward the guy who took her from me. The moron who plowed through three cars in his truck. Every goddamn day I struggle against my own thirst for vengeance. Edit 2. Thanks for the support, guys. Still sifting through the hundreds of replies and PMs, my inbox hurts. It is a little better to know that I really am not alone. Not just that people I don't know and have never met support me and wish me well, but also that others have gone through nearly the same crucible and survived it. The very idea of hope is like a foreign word to me right now, but it's a little less insane sounding to me now. Story 18. Late to the party, but this is a story I've never told anyone. The year was 1980-something and I was in 5th grade. I was a chubby white nerd. There was an Arab kid from 6th grade who used to bully me with his friends. Mostly just shoving, name-calling, and heckling, but there were a few times they got really nasty. Once was when I was feeling sick and I was in the bathroom at school. By total coincidence, the leader of this group saw me go in. I puked in the toilet and the next thing I knew, he was behind me and pushed my face into my own puke. Another time, they picked up some dog. On the way home, put it in a paper bag ran up behind me, and smashed the bag of dog on my head. This kind of stuff, mostly just heckling and fear jeering, happened every day after school. They lived one block past me, so no matter what route I took home, they could follow without being inconvenienced. Every day, as I'd break off toward my house at the end of my walk, the leader kid would say, You know you better not tell anyone, right? I'd say nothing, and I told no one. After stuff like the puke and dog, incidents, he'd grab me, get in my face, make some comment about how I was a total piece of garbage, and then he'd say, if you tell anyone, I will K you. I never told anyone because the way he said it made me believe he'd either K me or beat me to within an inch of my life. My uncle was a trucker. Not actually my uncle, but I called him my uncle. He used to drive cross country and he always took his dog, Brutus. Despite his tough name, Brutus was a tiny Pomeranian. We were at his house and he was telling us a story about two guys who tried to rob him at a truck stop while he was walking his dog. Having been a trucker for 20 plus years, he was used to seedy characters and hookers and candy dealers at truck stops. He was also well aware of wildlife that would come out to scrounge in the dumpsters and had come face to face with hungry forest creatures who thought his dog was a meal. Whenever he'd go out at night, he'd take his tire thumper. It's basically an 18, 24 inch hard wooden stick used to test semi truck tires. Don't ask how it works. I'm not a trucker. Anyway, the two guys confront him, and as he goes for his wallet, he grabs the thumper hanging off his belt instead. He whacks one guy in the head and the other runs away. He takes off and he ended his story by saying that he didn't know how hard he hit the guy. He wonders to this day if he actually may have K, the guy, but he said he looked at newspapers and never found anything. But this was the 80s S. Once he left town, it would probably be hard to look up something like that. Anyway, 
As he told his story, all I could think of was, man, I wish I had a tire thumper to take care of that candy who bullies me. I think of his comment about the forest creatures, and I ask if he has another tire thumper, because there's a mean dog that barks at me when I walk my own dog, and that thumper sounds like good protection in case the dog ever comes after us. He takes me out to his garage and hands me a tire thumper. I still remember that he had like 20 of them, and they all had logos on them. I guess banks give out free pens with Chase Bank, and truck supply places give out free tire thumpers with Tony's Truck Part Emporium. The one he gave me was from National Truck Parts. The bullying continues. I keep the thumper in the umbrella sleeve on the side of my backpack. I'm too afraid to use it. It's always three or four against one. I might whack one, but the others could get me. I bide my time. On occasion, I see him alone after school, so I figure maybe I'll make the one-on-one -on -one stand at that point. I don't know. I'm just scared overall. This kid is like well beyond twice my size. He was probably a retard who got held back and should have been in high school. I don't really know, but he was by far the biggest kid in school. Anyway, my school is doing a project on liberty and every class is making models of some kind of monument. Big models. My class was doing the Statue of Liberty out of chicken wire and clay and paper mache. The teacher offered extra credit for anyone who stayed after school. I stayed. I'm walking home after school, figuring I'm safe since they left over an hour ago. Lo and behold, here comes the bully right behind me. He must have stayed with his class too. He's alone. He's not saying anything, just walking. I get to what we called the trails. It's a chunk of land where no houses had been built on the block. It was about six empty plots on one side and two on the other, shaped like an L, so you could cut through the middle instead of going all the way around the block. It was like a sparse forest, and kids would come here to ride their bikes on the little trails that weaved through the trees and around the bushes. I would always take this shortcut on my way to school, but never on the way home. They usually weren't there to follow me to school, so I felt safe cutting through the little woods in the morning. This time, I decided to take the shortcut home, and if he followed me, I'd beat his ape. As I got to the trails, he started up with, Hey, fatso, and I don't have my boys! You think you can take me? Taunting bad. I got about 20 feet into the woods, and I heard him say, Hey, if I cut your fat uh, up in here, nobody's gonna find you for days! I looked back, and he had a pocket knife. He was waving it at me. I said something like, just leave me alone. And he said, time to gut a little piggy. He started running at me. I grabbed my tire thumper and swung blindly. I heard a crack and a scream. It was a blood-curdling scream. I don't even know what I hit, but he was on the ground crying like a baby. I lifted the thumper above my head to beat the ever-loving out of him, and he screamed for me to stop. My blind rage fear clicked off. He was begging me to go get help. Being a kid, I said something like, I don't want to get in trouble or some stupid. But I was starting to feel really, really bad about this. I mean, he was hurt. He was hurt bad. I was just about to take my lumps and run to get help when through his tears he said, Go get me help, you fat cat! I thought for a second, rage clicked on, and I brought that thumper down on his thigh as hard as I could. I heard a crack and that rage clicked off immediately and turned to confusion. Not remorse. Maybe fear? I don't know. He screamed again. The begging continued. He pleaded for me to get help. Now all of a sudden he was being very polite. Out of nowhere... I heard someone yelling from the street 20, 30, 40 feet away. You okay in there? Hello? I dropped down, covered his mouth with my hand, looked him straight in the eye and said, If you tell anyone, I will. Okay, you with your own knife after I break both your legs. Apparently, I'm a good actor, because his eyes reflected the fact that he totally believed me and completely understood. I took his pocket knife, hunkered down, and ran out of the forest toward my house. He wasn't in school for about a week. Without him, his buddies left me alone on the way home. When he came back, he had an arm in a cast, first hit, the blind one, and his leg in a cast, second hit. The story he gave everyone was that he was walking through the trails and fell off the makeshift ramp some kids built for their bikes. He never bothered me again. His friends never bothered me either. I kept that thumper with me every day, though. Probably stupid to carry around the weapon, but I was maybe 10 or 11 at most. I didn't know any better. I stashed his pocket knife in the attic of my grandfather's house that weekend. Grandma passed away shortly thereafter and Grandpa immediately moved into a retirement community after selling the house. I never had a chance to go back. I wonder if it's still there. In any case, that was the only thing I've ever done that outright hurt another person, and it's probably the only story I haven't told anyone. Not my wife, not my best friends, no. A few follow-up notes. Yes, I feel horrible about it. I always have, but I justify it because of the bullying. And when I was about to go get him help and bite the bullet for what I'd done, he pushed me again. I just snapped, and of course he recovered, so it's not like I left him crippled for life. I've Googled him over the years, and while he was arrested for domestic battery and animal in the late 90s, 
He owns his own business now, and his Facebook page gives the impression that he's turned himself around. He's married to another lady and has a couple kids. I think it's kind of interesting that he's Arab and his wife is Mexican. She's a big lady, and I have a feeling that if he tried smacking her around, she'd lay his a out worse than I did. I guess maybe a good woman can make a bad man good. Edit. Grammar and spelling. Story 19. I feel terribly anxious all of the time, and the smallest thing sets me into a panic. I feel paralyzed and scared. I don't know how to put it. It's like a mounting feeling of dread. I am in therapy, but it isn't helping. Edit. I am so overwhelmed by this positive response. I've gotten a lot of comments and PMs reassuring me it's going to be okay, giving me advice, or just offering to be an ear for me. I've gotten a lot of comments about changing therapists. I actually really like my therapist, but I haven't talked to her about my anxiety per se. I began going to her because I found myself disgusting, and I was deeply ashamed of who I was. It is difficult to articulate, but I have a lot of self-loathing, and I knew that it was totally irrational, but the shame was still there. Whenever I ate sweets, I imagined my stomach ballooning into a ball of fat, and my cheeks get puffy with soft flesh. Whenever I made a joke that fell flat, I could feel the contempt radiating off the other people in the room. Whenever I took an extra Oreo, danced awkwardly, or failed an exam, I thought I could see the disgust in everyone's eyes and the sneers on everyone's lips. I thought that I wasn't a real person. I was only good enough to use as a large paperweight, a boat anchor, or a talking garbage disposal, eating everything in sight and making obnoxious and stupid comments. And to top it off, I was ashamed of being ashamed, because I knew that my shame was irrational, and this irrational fixation was embarrassing me. I wanted to punish myself to absolve myself of this shame. I fantasize about drilling holes into my legs. We've been making progress on some of this stuff. I don't hate myself as much. And we found out that a lot of the issues I have stem from abusive parenting and loneliness. I wasn't a very social kid, was bullied and ostracized a bit. I didn't have any friends, and I think that took a toll on me. Because of that, I became desperate for people to see and love me, and that is where the fear started, I think. But for some reason, I didn't link the tightness in my chest and my sense of panic to anxiety. I also didn't link my self-loathing and panic together. I think that the anxiety comes from a pressure to be someone who is loved and respected. And the self-loathing comes when I have failed to live up to my or other people's expectations. I think this is why therapy hasn't been helping me the way it could. While I could articulate why self-hate, I didn't know that the anxiety was at the root of it. So I could learn to love myself and get over my shame for a little bit. But those intrusive and panicky thoughts, that fear would always wiggle its way back into my brain, and I would be back to square one. Confronting my shame didn't mean that I was confronting my fear, if this makes any sense. And finally, my feelings of fear was never a condition to me. It was who I am. Being anxious was the default. It was normal. But I have recently realized that doing classwork shouldn't make me anxious to the point of tears. I shouldn't cry every time I take a test, and pacing back and forth in the dorm basements at 2 a.m. because I'm too scared to start my OCHEM homework is not normal. I made this post because now that I knew about it, how would I explain it? How could I talk about this in a way that doesn't make me look crazy or weak? I am so glad that none of you called me weak. I hope that gives you a bit of perspective on why and how it is difficult to articulate this to myself. I think I have a lot more internalized issues to work out than I thought I did. And I will be talking to my therapist about medication. Thank you all so much again for listening to me and for your advice. I know I rambled a bit in this edit, but I felt that I owed you all an explanation. I probably won't be able to respond to all of the comments, but I have read everyone. Story 20. My true reason for becoming a mechanical engineer is to work on VR. My family knows this. What they don't know is I want to create full dive VR for. Reasons to monster girls to have. With hundreds of women. To allow guys and girls to feel like the opposite gender. To try out love as different creatures and gender. To create entire MMOs centered around it. And that I've had to resist the urge to, in detail, Write down all the rules for said MO. I'm researching, learning, and it will probably take decades of hard work. I'll learn programming, get my four-year degree, maybe move to Canada for a two-year degree in mechatronics. I'm studying this and have personal heroes, I, people that move my dream closer like Michael Abrash, Oculus head scientist, and Neuralink, company working on brain-machine interfaces. I want, to, I want everyone to, and I want to allow everyone to do it however they can imagine. I turned my horniness into ambition, and I'm always horny. Edit. I don't know how I keep getting comments on this after a day, but with all of them, I felt I needed to say something. I'm but one man, and what one man can do in 50 years, 50 men can do in five. That's why I personally plan on joining up with a company down the line. But if you're interested in my dream half as much as I am, you can help work on it too. Anyone can learn anything. You don't have to make it your life goal, but if you want to help, there's plenty of ways.
Story 21. My house is currently for sale. Everyone I know thinks I'm moving to a nearby area. I'm actually selling my house, quieting my job, then traveling the world for a few years. I hope to hand my notice in at work before 2017 is over. Edit. Whilst this isn't an AMA, I've really enjoyed reading your comments and answering as many as I could. But I'm off to bed now as unfortunately I still have work in the morning. Thank you all for your positive feedback and words of wisdom. I'm sure you'll be hearing from me again. So many wonderful people on Reddit. Thank you. Edit 2. Thank you for the gold, random stranger, yet fellow friend. Story 22. About three months after finding out that my now ex-wife was having an affair and our subsequent split, I got really depressed. On two separate occasions, I downed a fifth of whiskey and played Russian roulette. Once the bullet was only one chamber over, the other time it was two away from chamber. I never told anyone about it. I was already getting tons of sympathy and I hated it. I hate when people feel sorry for me, so I never told anyone. Edit. Thank you all so much for your kind words. Sometimes I forget what a great community Reddit can be. For clarification, this was in 2014. I'm stable and moving on with my life now. I saw a shrink for a time and it helped a ton. That and exercise. Best solutions I know for conquering depression. If I can come back from that, anyone can come back from anything. Never give up. Fight until you're exhausted and then fight a little more. No matter who you are or what's happened to you, somebody somewhere loves you. Story 23. I'm a leader at my church, volunteer not paid or making a career of it. I used to teach Sunday school, still occasionally fill in if someone is sick. Went to a Christian college for a bit. Minored in New Testament Greek. Married a Christian girl. Had kids who are growing up in our church. I could no longer bring myself to honestly believe in God. I wish I could, but it just doesn't make any sense. I only maintain the illusion of keeping the faith because it would cause a lot of heartbreak to people who I really care about if they knew. It's like I lost a friend who I had for 34 years, who I was super close to, who was always there for me, who knew me better than anyone else. But I can't mourn this loss because my family and close friends still believe this friend is alive. And if I tell them, I don't believe they'll feel like they lost me. Story 24. I am unintentionally high as at work right now. Update? I'm new, so I'm not sure how these things work. But I turned 21 last Sunday, and so I obviously went out and drank far more than I should have. The next morning, I went into work with possibly the largest migraine I've ever had. A few hours went by, and finally I broke and asked a coworker who's known to have anxiety and depression if she had any ibuprofen I could have, so I could at least do my job. Well, I'm not sure what she gave, but they definitely weren't ibuprofen. And once I asked, she just said they help with migraines, so I took them. There were three identical pills made of powder and they had numbers a dash between them. Anyways, I take them. And for a little, I don't feel anything. And then I just start feeling odd. I'm like HM. Maybe I shouldn't have taken all three, but at least the headache is gone and shrug it off. 20 minutes later, and all I can do is scroll through Reddit. And I'm on in cloud nine. I was reading The Shining before. But I had to stop because I realized I read the same page more than 10 times. But then things kind of went downhill. I haven't been at work since Monday because I was randomly JED tested two and a half hours later. They didn't find anything but have decided to suspend me for a week and a half for the suspicion of candy use. I would have responded to everyone much sooner, but I didn't really have a great few last days. Story 25. My mom D me for my entire childhood by either being active in the mistreatment or being silent and allowing her boyfriend to do it. Fast forward to now, her mental health issues are taking a toll. She is a drunk, meth user, and gambling addict. When she calls me, it is like someone I don't even know. Last week, she was in the hospital for a heart attack, and I really wish she would just pass away. I lost her when I was a kid. I feel like this other is an imposter, and I just want it to pass away, and for her, and I'm not going to lie, my pain to end. Edit. I just want to say that the response to this post has been a mixture of sadness and happiness for me. I would like to give a somewhat brief overview to my story, and perhaps it will help others. I don't remember when this started, but my earliest memories are of it occurring. Here's a funny joke. What does someone who wears glasses and someone who is D from an early age have in common? They think how they see the world is normal. I never thought to question anything ever. For a number of years, I was a quiet child and didn't make many friends because people scared me. By the time I realized something was terribly wrong in my household, I refused to let the few friends I did have over. I have a very vivid memory of being small. I must have been around four because my younger brother was an infant. My mother had taken the three of us into one of the bedrooms and locked the door while her boyfriend smashed things downstairs and was just losing his mind. He was a meth head too. He had a cattle prod and I could hear the crackling of the electricity through the walls. My mom had burns from it all over her arms. She asked me, a small child, if I would call the police if he broke in. I started crying and begged her to please not make me. That I would get in trouble and he would hurt me and I was scared. She asked me, 
do you want me to pass away? Those words are so clear in my mind, I can still hear it perfectly. To this day, I have nightmares of having to call 911 and not being able to speak or pushing the wrong buttons. The became worse. Every trip to the hospital was an accident. Every public outburst was treated as a parent having to wrangle an unruly young kid. I tried to run away in the winter. I packed some clothes in my little backpack and went out onto the ice of a river near our house. I laid down out in the middle, in the cold, and day just watching the snow fall down. I was nice and warm in my coat and multi-layered pants. My parents would never buy a snowsuit, but I went back. Because I was scared of what would happen to my mom. Her boyfriend always told me that if I ran away, he would K her and my brother and keep me alive so that I would have the memory. I stayed until I was 14, and he tried to drown me in dirty dishwater. I ran and started living at a friend's house. My mom would call constantly, begging me to come back. That things had gotten so much worse for her. But I was too afraid, and the guilt piled up. He ended up leaving when I was 18. I have not talked to him since. I consider the time I was around him like a terrible, horrible nightmare. My mother spiraled. What was once a functional alcoholic turned I to a complete mess. She turned to prostitution to subsidize her addiction. She lived on the streets, and every time I moved and slowly got better, she would call and ask for money. I gave in to that for a long time. I was hospitalized and diagnosed with a number of mental disorders. She called me a malingerer and that my pain was nothing in comparison to her own. I got married and had two wonderful children. She tells me my husband will leave because I am crazy, that my children will grow to be addicts, and that I am her clone. That I can't escape it! She is like a voice in my head berating me, while at the same time working her way back in like some sort of abusive spouse. When I listen to music intended for exes, it makes me think of her. Adele's Hello is about my mom for me. To everyone who has dealt with a similar situation, you are amazing. You are strong. You will get through this. When I was young, every day was hell. I thought it would never end, but it did. It will get better. You just have to make it better. I love you all. I don't know who the hell you are or what you have been through, but I love you. More edit. To every comment that said I won't read your comment, I do. I read everyone. Keep them coming. It's just dinner time and I have to make my children foods, so I can't respond right away. Another edit. To the people saying, I didn't have it this bad. Or, wow, what I went through is nothing in comparison. Stop it. You just stop it right now. You have pain. You are allowed to feel it without feeling bad and comparing it to another person's pain and suffering. We don't sit around comparing our joys, do we? You don't win $100 off of a scratch ticket and immediately tell yourself, well, this is stupid. I don't have as much money as Bill Gates. Your suffering is just as God bad legitimate as mine because it's you who felt it. Story 26. Well, my wife knows this now, but I wouldn't tell another soul. A few years ago, me and my wife moved into her parents' place to save some money. So we were adjusting to living with parents again. It was strange and uncomfortable. I woke up one morning, and it felt like the world was about to fall out of my butthole. I went to open the bedroom door and could hear my father-in-law getting ready to head out for work. I'm panicking, thinking, I know this is going to be bad. I'm not going to go take this mega dump so early on into our time living here. I need to devise a plan. I stayed in the bedroom emptied out the little bin we had in the corner, and into the bag that was placed in there, I wiped my butt with some tissues that happened to be on the side, stand up and tie a knot in the bag. Now I'm getting ready for work with this bag of, by my feet, my next stage is to get rid of this thing. I can't do it in any of the bins here, think. It, I'll take it out and find the nearest one I can see. I even questioned putting this bag of, in a neighbor's place if nobody sees. I walked 15 minutes to work with a bag of my own bag in my hoodie pocket until I could find a public bin to throw it in. TLDR, I in a bag and carried it work. Story 27. I involuntarily had my balls squeezed by a jealous husband that I never knew existed. One time, a girl had me over at her place. Stupid me, I didn't look around very much and noticed the photos all over of her husband and kids. Ties me to her bed, arms and legs all pointed at the four corners of her bed. Kinda hot being a little bit vulnerable like that. A few minutes into having some fun times, her husband comes home shouting, I knew it! Hits her a few times, leaving her in a pile on the floor, crying. Next thing I know, he's coming toward me. Not fast, but slow, like he is going to enjoy what's next. Squeezed the out of my balls. I don't mean a single hand crushing the whole sack either. I mean each nut in a separate hand, between the thumb and index finger. Hurt like hell as he did it for probably ten minutes straight before finally slapping her once more before storming out.